A today all day. I'm filling in for Jenna this morning because she was jumping out of a plane from 10,000 feet. You know, remember, it happened. And it was all for a real good reason. Here is a recap in case you missed it. Well, a little uh, while ago, our dear Jenna was one of those stars in the sky. <laughs> she was over Virginia, now back on terra firma. In case you missed it, just a little while ago, our Jenna jumped out of a plane to honor two birthdays this month. Woo! The U.S. Army's 246th and what would have been her dear Gampy's 97th birthday, landing right at the site of a new National Museum of the U.S. Army that's open to the public. Jenna, so, we, we, were, we were so nervous oh, for you, but so <laughs> proud, so very proud of you. How are you feeling? Oh, my gosh. I, first of all, watching that <laughs> brings back all of the <laughs> excitement. I was feeling nervous, but to be able to jump with this incredible team, the, the U.S. Army's Golden Knights, is such an honor, and I got to land at this brand new museum. And so, y'all, I don't, I don't even really know how I feel. <laughs> hey, hey, Jenna, I've skydived a, a couple times, and that moment when you open up the door and you smell the air, I mean, you can't prevent shaking, but you actually did it for a, a real reason. <laughs> I just did it for fun. Why was it so important for you to jump? Yeah, yeah. I, yes, when the door opens, it's like one of the most terrifying moments <laughs> of my life. But I did it because my grandpa... I love to jump. He, he first jumped when he was a 19-year-old um, boy fighting in World War II, and he actually hit his head on the plane and um, regretted it because two of the other men in the plane didn't live. And so he promised himself that if, because he lived, he would jump again and make a clean jump. So he continued to do it for all of these birthdays. And so to honor him and then all of those that serve um, is the reason why I did it today, which is... it. What's pretty emotional, I was surprised. JBH, I know you did it uh, once when you were 18. You did it today. You plan to do it again? <laughs> I, if my mom will do it with me or oh. if Craig Melvin will do it with me, then maybe. <laughs> I think, Craig, Laura Bush, I think Laura Bush might be your better better chance there. <laughs> wow. Hey, Je Jenna, it was pretty impressive. You guys slid right into where you were, the, the marker where you were supposed to land. Were you nervous for the landing? I mean, it's one thing to jump out of a plane, but you got to land eventually. Well, I felt bad because we took out a cameraman or two. Um, it was coming really fast, and he was like... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Lift your legs. Go. See, I don't know if you can see. You yeah. stuck the landing. Ooh. You stuck the ooh. landing. Um, <laughs> bowling for like, camera. Lift up your legs, there we that go. Was that was <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, Jenna, oh uh, well done. We are so We're proud of you. So and we know your Gampy is looking down, and he's so proud too. So mm. thanks so hey. much. So love sweet, you, Jenna. Out. Thank you so much. We love you, Jenna. All right, we Thank love you. you. Love y'all. Coming up next on Today Talk, Chanel reveals her pre-show warm-up dance, and she got moves. Stay with us. It is time for Overheard on Third. Don't you do a warm-up dance no, every she, like, morning? No, she blows bubbles into a... Before yeah, the, no, I do the road exercise. She's got a warm-up. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> you know what? Come on, come on. Bye, Chanel. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on Chanel. Show us your moves. Let me see your moves. Oh, we know Al's moves. Keep the clothes. Let me show you Al's moves. This is where you live. Not so fast. None of this. <laughs> None of that. This is where you live. So USA. anyway, I like having a baby now because this is my baby. <laughs> wow. Like the Philly fanatic. That's what he does. Right. It's true. Oh, <laughs> comparing Dylan to the Philly fanatic. Yeah, he does like that. that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the U.S. Olympic <laughs> swim trials continue tonight at 8 p.m. on NBC, SN, and Peacock, and at 10 p.m. on NBC. <laughs> I didn't know that was coming. You just gave me a heads up. No, why would I? If you played like, you know. <laughs> you know, one of the things I will say about working with you guys yes. and our, our dearly departed friend Craig, and by, by dearly departed, I mean <laughs> Yeah, we like, good we Lord. Laugh. He just likes uh, to get out anyway, early. Is that we laugh a lot. We do. We spend a lot of time laughing. That's and LinkedIn true. polled its users asking how important laughter is at work. Mm. Uh, they had, like, almost 36 thousand folks weighing okay. in a majority say 83 percent is you you've got to laugh oh more. for sure yeah people often ask you know we we work early hours right. and we can be traveling a lot or work just busy schedules and they always say you know 
but do you like it? It's like, I love it because I just, I love the people I work with. I yeah. love laughing. And when, we, when we do off the rails on, on Sirius X <laughs> oh my channel gosh. there'd be times where I don't get to say a word because you guys just dissolve <laughs> it's true. into laughing. It's our therapy. Yeah. It is. Yes. And the other thing that we love to do around here is congratulate our friends oh. when, when things, nice things happen yeah. to them. And Chanel, you are a proud Northwestern gra alumni, and you're going to be inducted into the Hall of Achievement yeah. at the Medill are you School old of Journalism. For that? I know. I'm like, am I a Hall of Famer? I, it is probably one of the biggest honors of my life. I kid you not. That is so um, wonderful. And guess what? Peter Alexander um, is also receiving the honor. We both went to the Medill School of Journalism wow. um, oh, at Northwestern. In fact, let's take a look at some of early. <gasps> oh, this is my God. The Northwestern Wait, News Wait, Network. First of all, of listen to my voice. And those are numbers that Northwestern administrators want to beat God. next year. <laughs> what is that Look at special programs like <laughs> these. Listen, All listen. This year, dating you will help. Oh my God! How did Chanel I get Jones, anywhere? Northwestern News Network. <laughs> I mean, that's Clara right there. Where did you guys find that video? Oh, we, can, we have everything. Um, so that's why I think Northwestern, because somehow that turned into this. Wait, is that what you? Was that when you met Uche? You know what? I don't like you, you make it sound like why would he possibly have gone I'm for her? I'm kind of shocked. That's, We've all I seen cannot it. believe. <laughs> what the heck? All right, we gotta go. Um, uh, we're gonna what separate them thinking? during the commercial. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, you don't want to miss it. It's the story behind Jenna's jump. Welcome back today on Hoda and Jenna. Jenna's skydiving partner tells us what he thinks her free fall skills are all about. Plus, you're going to meet a thrill seeker who jumped out of a plane 100 times in one day. Jenna, you are at the National Museum of the United States Army in Fort Belvoir. Um, I'm, by the way, I'm marveling at you. I am looking at you differently today than I did yesterday because of what you did up there. Like, are you depleted, relieved? How do you feel? I feel great. I mean, I, what an honor to be here at this magnificent new museum. And I really did, I mean, the one thing that I do not recommend is listening to yourself scream <laughs> over and over again. That's kind of embarrassing. Um, but it was... I don't know. Oh, oh, I did not expect it to be as emotional as it was, but it was. It was really emotional for me, and I feel proud and relieved and exhausted and all the good things. Well, the Golden Knights were amazing. And literally, when you said, I think you were up, when you were in the plane and you said you've never felt closer to your grandfather, I think that touched everybody in a special place. Yes. I mean, well, I, it was emotional, and but without the Golden Knights, and can we just show these incredible guys over here? They knew that I was getting nervous, so they started t telling me all these hilarious jokes. Like, I mean, some of them were not that hilarious, but things like, like I can now I can't even remember. Tell me one. Uh, how'd you get this job? We just sort of fell into. Oh it. yeah, we just sort of fell into this job. Those types of jokes that were bad jokes, kind of funny in the moment, but they felt the dad jokes exactly they felt my nerves and they were just so kind and they're the best of the best and i guess in case you missed it should we relive it even oh, though i can't believe i let's hear relive it again? let's go <laughs> she's got it. oh my god oh my god there she's off wow ah! Jenna, oh my gosh. Okay, oh my gosh. <laughs> wait a second. First of all, you're cringing because you're listening to yourself scream. Like everyone, there was something that everyone was crying. I never thought, like I was thinking, why am I crying watching you fall like that? But there was something about the adrenaline, the rush, the meaning, 
all of it. So when you were when you were rocking in the doorway, what were you? <laughs> I what, know. what was going on? Do you remember, or you just blanked out? Uh, when I was w rocking in the doorway, I really was like, why did I say yes yeah, to this? Yeah. I mean, I think I said, why did I say yes to this one million times <laughs> this morning? But, the, but, but at that moment, I just felt, I felt, I did, I felt closer to my Gamps, who I loved mm. so much, and I felt like I brave, you know? I felt <laughs> courageous, and I just went for it. But by the way, I couldn't have done it without somebody on my back. I would never. I, I'm a tandem jumper. Well, what was he telling you? And we're going to talk to him in just a bit because he's an incredible human being. I love this photo. Please frame it somewhere. But like what oh. you don't just he don't just get in the plane and go, OK, here we go. I mean, he he prepped you. He got you ready. He told you things like what did you yes. have to do? Well, we did like a whole morning of mm -hmm. training, really, you know, and that made me feel completely safe. But I was like, when we saw the plane and the engine turned on, I was like, oh my gosh, that's, I'm like gonna go up in that. It's, and so I had this moment though this morning and I, and I told you about it a little earlier, yes, but where I, where I looked at the plane and I had no idea, but the, the Golden Knights, the army had named the plane after my grandpa. Oh. And it was a complete surprise to me. So I looked over and saw his name and it just brought me this <laughs> peace. I mean, it inspired me. Yeah. And um, that was like at six, six o'clock this uh. morning. And it just was like the sign like, okay, you've got it. How did you not curse, really? Because I know you. And there's, you were cursing. Every time the cameras went off, everyone told me you were cursing. So you cannot control yourself. Yet you were falling from I a plane miles above the Earth's surface. And you didn't curse. Well, I had a code word. I had a code <laughs> word. I had a, a code secret word in my head that I practiced saying. And actually, the guys were hilarious. The code word was Hoda. And the guys were like, remember, emphasis on the duh. <laughs> emphasis on the duh. Don't just go down yelling ho. <laughs> All right, you've got some so special I feel guests. Like having that <laughs> Okay, I want to bring in yeah, some please. awesome guests. Can we bring in my mm -hmm. skydiving partner and really the man who saved my life this yeah. morning, Sergeant First Class Joseph Ablin. He's completed more than 10,000 freefall parachute jumps. And sitting next to him is retired Army Sergeant First Class Mike Elliott, who has done more than 15,000 jumps, including three with my beloved grandfather. So I am so happy that these guys were here with me today because I could never have ever done it without them. So Sergeant Ablin, let's let's be honest. Was I a good student? Jen, I thought you did perfect. It was great sharing the skies with you 10,000 feet over the, the museum here. And there were some cuss words, but it wasn't when the camera was rolling. I didn't hear any. <laughs> you didn't hear any. Hey, I'm, I'm, hey Mike, I want to ask you, we know what Jenna yelled on the way down. I was just curious, did her, was her grandfather, did he have any words to say when he was falling to the Earth's surface? <laughs> I, I don't recall him screaming quite as much on his way down, <laughs> but a little less quieter than, than Jenna. But I'm sure uh, Gampy was very proud of watching you fall today. Absolutely amazing. Did he ever tell you um, why he loved to skydive so much? Did he ever talk about it with you? He, he never talked about it personally, but he written me many letters. And the last letter, he stated that he felt like he could never come down from that skydive and live in turning 90 yeah. was a big deal. He absolutely love falling to the sky. How sweet is that? That's absolutely. the sweetest thing to hear. I remember when he landed on his 90th Hoda, he landed and then he immediately asked for Mike because he wanted to hug him and thank oh. him so much for jumping with him. Do you remember that moment? Absolutely. Absolutely, I remember that. Oh. Jenna, who were, anyway, you, who were you thinking what, about, Jenna, you, when you were on the way down? What were you thinking about as you were going down? Well, there is something, and I'm sure that these guys can attest to it, um, I know that Sergeant Ablin did this once thinking he was never going to do it again, and now he's done it 10,000 times. There's something about being up there and the perspective of being closer sort of to the heavens and seeing this beautiful, magnificent earth that we have below us. So it is, a, I mean, do you all find it to be spiritual in some ways? It's, it's a place most people never get to see. And the fact that we get to see it on a daily basis, is, it's quite amazing. And then, and then we get to share that experience with people who have never gone before. And that just really is truly amazing for us to be able to take 
<sighs> take yourself and George H.W. Bush on tandems and share that experience with, with yeah. everyone. I mean, you were there at the time when he wasn't maybe going to get to go, and then the skies had opened up mm. and he got to dive. And you guys really made made our so proud um, and you continue to do so and just thank you so so much for for being part of today we appreciate being all of today couldn't have yeah. done it without you jenna it was a it was a day that i'll <laughs> never forget as long as i live here at the today show you made us all feel super brave and there were a lot of guys and people on twitter who were responding and they were tweeting, I'm not crying, you're crying. So there was something special that hit <laughs> a lot of people when you jumped out of that plane. So thank you. It says, I loved her before and I love her even more now. What a beautiful tribute oh, and such so happy sweet. tears being shed here. And that was one of dozens <laughs> of those exact kind of tweets. One person even tweeted, tweeted a video of them crying. <laughs> And this, what, what, is, what does Julie say? I literally oh. started crying as Jenna was yelling Hoda Hoda on the way down. <laughs> I'm so glad Jenna landed Again, safely. the emphasis on the duck. <laughs> on the duck. Some people jumped one time. How about a guy who jumped a hundred <laughs> times in one day, Jenna? His name, of course, is Can Doug you? Hendricks. Can you imagine, Hoda, he jumped every nine minutes for 14 hours. He he obviously won some sort of record. I can't even imagine. And it was all for an amazing cause, a fundraising effort to support firefighters. And Doug is here. Congratulations, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Doug, it's great to see you. We are, I mean, we're, we're marveling at Jenna, and we know the nerves and the whole adrenaline and everything that takes to jump one time. Are you nuts jumping 100 times in one day? <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm crazy, but uh, it, was, uh, it was an effort that was months in the making and a lot of preparation went into it, and then it was just time to execute. And Doug, what was, I know this was a fundraising effort, but tell me that, I know, first of all, how many times have you jumped in your life? And tell me what the catalyst for this crazy idea was. Uh, so, Including yesterday's jumps, I have about 3,000 jumps, and I've been jumping for about nine years now. And I sort of realized recently that I had the sort of the people and the resources in place to make something like this happen. And I like doing sort of challenging things and new things, and I felt like this could be a, a good next step. Well, this is really, really cool. And again, because it's for such a great cause, um, it really does kind of shine a light on it. Now, I think people might be watching this and thinking, well, Jenna did it. Maybe I can do it. Doug's pretty cool. Maybe I can do it. So, Doug, um, if you were looking at someone and, say, and giving them advice, whether they should or shouldn't do it, what are some of the criteria? I mean, I would certainly recommend everyone try skydiving. Um, but there's, there's skydiving facilities all across the country and all across the world. And... Uh, and generally, sort of any, all types of, uh, of body sizes and, and shapes can, uh, can go skydiving. Okay, so you don't think there are any restrictions of, of, of any kind for some folks? Uh, most places have a restriction based on, uh, based on weight. So there's usually an upper limit, um, and that varies place to place, but that's just a, a, a restriction based on the, the gear. You know, I, I felt like there was something almost spiritual about mm -hmm. it this morning. And I, I wonder, do you feel that too? And is there advice that you have for somebody that wants to do this? Yeah, so it's, it's definitely, I have different feelings jumping now versus my very first jump, but it's still, uh, it still gets me excited in every single jump. And, uh, and for advice for people looking to go skydiving, I would say sort of seek out the, your, uh, your local uh, sky facility and then sort of enter in with sort of an open mind and, uh, and sort of be brave and, and go tackle it. Well, Doug, good for you. Good for you raising well, money for a great cause. And uh, you're pretty remarkable, so congratulations. Thanks, Doug. Today Talks continues after the break. I'll have an exclusive chat with Donna Rama. You'll see it here on Today All Day. Welcome back to Today Talks in our exclusive content that you can only see here on Today All Day. This is a big day, okay? It's not every day that our girl Donna sits in this chair. First I've of all, never sat in this comfy chair before. It feels good. Donna, you know what's funny? I just had a little moment here where I was reflecting on the very beginning when you first came to work 
on this hour of the show and just how you've changed and evolved and grown and like now you do pieces that move me to tears and I was like God, I remember what me to tears right now. but I do remember when you came in and you yeah. were just like okay I'm gonna do this and this and all of a sudden like everything I don't know there's all you know this what's amazing hmm. you have always been an amazing guiding light for me whether you knew it or not whether you knew me or not hmm. you have always been so amazing I remember I was a sophomore in college and I was an intern at NBC ad sales mm -hmm. and I happened to see you and I went up to you with my NBC badge to make sure that you knew I wasn't a stalker. And I was like, hi, I'm Donna. I just, I'm a huge fan and I love your show. I'd love to work with you one day. And you were like, well, come on down to the show. Yeah. And I was drafting an email. I was so nervous. Yeah. It took hours. On my lunch break, I see you on the plaza again. Yeah. And you looked at me and said, yeah. are you You're stalking sure? me? You remember me. I remembered me. you. Well, you're memorable. And you're you, memorable. And you're you memorable. were like, send that email already. But you know what's funny? There are a lot of people, and I think a lot of young people, who look at you and say, boy, mm -hmm. you know, how did she get that break? Like, what did she do? So why do you think, even to get the ad sales internship yeah. thing, like most people would dream about working at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, but have no idea yeah. how they would do it. So what did, I don't even know, what did you do to get there? I, I knew I had to build a resume. Right. So I got five internships in college, and that was the main thing. Three of them were with NBC. And okay. I just always kept going back to, um, you know, just work your hardest at whatever you're given. Right. And I realized I was happiest on this hour. No matter yeah. what I was doing behind the scenes, I was just happy to be here. I think heart... I think it's hard because it's everyone hard. works really hard right. and you're like, you know, it, it's, it's but the combination you connect. of... No, you do something different because everybody works hard. That's not it. Sorry. Because I know, because but you do something different. You have a, you connect because I think that's the difference. Some people work here and they work hard, but you don't ever connect with them. You know, I, I think yeah. I learned this recently and I think you have this, t I mean, obviously you have this too, but I think this might be the reason that we share. Hmm. Um, this feeling of empathy, I think comes yeah. from being a first generation American. Yeah. I think having parents who weren't born here yeah. and who therefore had to work really hard, yeah. I think that that's a value that's always been instilled in me. And like, I, you know, I have such a passion for being here. It's my favorite part <laughs> of know. life. <laughs> But to have my name on the screen, uh -huh. I want to make my dad proud Ugh. in that way. Uh. And so that's really, that's really what gets me. And I think, I think, I think that shared empathy yeah. that we hopefully have. I mean, yeah. am I tooting my own horn? No, but you're like, not. Because but it's, I think it's because from look, that. And I also think our parents expect expected us to do something yeah. good. Yeah. They were like, well, we're here. Go do something. It's like, okay. And you feel like you do have a million choices where, as if our parents had stayed, right. you know, in their home countries, it's not, you know, I just, right. I can't even, do you ever think about, ma'am, what would my life have been like if they never moved? I do. Yeah. I think about that all the time. And I mm -hmm. think, I mean, still probably my dad wants me to be a surgeon. <laughs> that's <laughs> exactly. not, that ship sailed. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I do think it's really important. And I think, um, you know, I'm sure your mom mm -hmm. is always so proud to see yeah. you. And well, the idea that you're, well, I think that was important what you said, that your dad actually gets to look up and see his name yeah. on the screen. His name yeah. is there. The girl he gave, you know, he, you know, yeah. your mom gave birth to, and there you are, so. Yeah, and I think too, I mean, fulfilling, mm -hmm. a, fulfilling a dream is important too, because that's something that I don't think I mean, my mom loved raising my sister and mm -hmm. me, but to have a professional dream mm -hmm. fulfilled, I think that's a big deal. And well, I do think, me. what I think is interesting about this today's, t today's talk is that there are young people who want to know yeah. or they want a break. Yeah. And they wonder of all the millions of people, how do you wind up? And sometimes I think it's like perfect timing. Sometimes it's, it's definitely hard work. It's definitely hard. Mm -hmm. It's definitely getting to know people. But I think you're unique. But Don you, is, Don you is know unique. What? I just got to say, though, having mm -hmm. a mentor like you, having a mentor like Jenna, having a mentor like Kathy Lee mm -hmm. and everyone behind mm -hmm. the scenes, I mean, we're cheering you on. That's, By the, that's way, the best part. Wait, you don't even know what's going to happen to Donna. <laughs> we're all going to be working for Donna. Okay. Wait, and we were supposed to talk about Jenna skydiving. Well, she by jumped, the way. okay, and she's uh, fine. She jumped. We both saw. She's fine. She's good. It was all good. And we, we all cried. You. We love you, Jenna. All right, that's it for this episode of Today Talks. Keep watching for more of Today All Day. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.